Okay, so let's get started on making this lemon meringue pie with a ginger crunch. Uh, now this was David's mom's favorite lemon meringue pie, so we're gonna recreate it and share it to everyone so you can enjoy it as well. So it's just divine. Um, so I've got quite a few ingredients here, so I'm gonna just push the ones that we don't need straight away out of the way. First of all, uh, David's mom used to make it in the traditional style, uh, and it's a sort of flan, uh, but we're gonna make it with individual ones so everyone gets a little one to eat, so you don't have to worry about cutting it and all crumbling. So we individual ones, and these were like 75 cents each from the, the China shop in town, so really, really perfect for this kind of thing. So that's great, uh, so I'm gonna put that out of the way. So for the meringue, we're gonna use a golden cast and sugar, a little bit more extra luxury. So uh, we've got 175 grams of cast and sugar. Uh, and then obviously to go with the meringue, we have four egg whites from, it's, it's actually a medium size egg. So that's for the, the meringue. And then for the actual filling, and this is where it gets interesting, we're making it different. So, uh, so we're using four uh, lemons, the juice of four lemons and the, the rind of four the lemons together. And then we're using full fat condensed milk. So this has really got tons of calories in it. So, mm, 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 mm. Uh, And then we're gonna add in some egg yolk there as well. So four egg yolks. So four egg yolks and four egg whites, so it's perfect. Um, so that's that. And then for the base, um, this is where the, the, the lovely ginger comes from. So um, it comes into play. So in, in Spain, we have these little ginger biscuits and they are just, the, 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 even the smell, uh, little, they're little, just tiny little things. If you, if you dunk it in your tea, you've got three seconds because they're so thin and straight in the mouth like that. Uh, and they're just lovely, okay? So that's 175 grams of these, so actually, so, so obviously you just pop out, pop. So I do, I do roughly half and half. I just put this in the scales and I just wait until it comes to 175 grams uh, in there like that, okay? So, uh, so just roughly half and half. So digestive biscuits um, and gingerbread biscuits. Um, I think in America they call them crackers. I can't remember the name of it, but just Google digest the biscuit and you'll, you'll find out what it is. Um, just like a little basic little biscuit. Yep, and uh, you pop it in a food bag or you just get your, uh, your rolling pin. I like to get the rolling pin and just get some frustration out. Um, just, it just makes me feel good doing that. So just back and forward. Always give it a little shake. It brings the crumbs, the hard bits to the top and then a little shake. Or you can put it in your food processor if you want to be all fancy. But time it's all mixed into the the little flans, then it doesn't matter. All right, so there we go. We do that all day, so that's fine. And then we have, so it's 175 grams, 50-50 digestive biscuit and gingerbread biscuit. Uh, we have uh, 25 grams of, de is it demerara? Dem I never know how to pronounce it. The, the demerara sugar, so it's the crumbly sugar, which is nice for the crunch. Uh, and we have, I can't remember. <laughs> 75 grams, oh yeah, 75 grams of butter, uh, salted or unsalted, it doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, we're just gonna pop the, the butter in the, the pot, pop that on. Now I switch this off, this gets very hot. It was actually getting, it was getting, there we go, it melt, melts very quickly. Okay, so can, is that underneath? Let me just put it across a bit, yep. Okay, so we just want to melt the butter. This, this takes me back to working in the bakery. So when I was an apprentice in the bakery, so I worked in the bakery for five years, almost five years. Um, uh, I used to make all the tray bakes. So I used to make the millier shortbread, the mint slice, Mars bar cake, and it was always the, but we used to buy the, the biscuit base and you could buy it, it was digestive biscuits, but they were they already come and crushed. Um, so it's quite nice to do the, to do homemade ones uh, because you can put in your gingerbread, etc. cetera, in there. Uh, and we used to make, it was a huge pot to make the, 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 the tray bakes. Uh, and it was all just good fun because you, you, you could have a wee daydream, you could have a little chit chat to the, uh, one of the other confectioners because uh, it takes a wee while for the butter to melt because it was a lot of butter. Um, and I remember one of the, the girls, uh, Lynn, who worked there, she um, absolutely couldn't stand butter. So of course when the butter was melted, the smell, she had to run past on her nose because even the smell of the butter was uh, too much for her. Yeah, so uh, and occasionally we used to be allowed to make fancy tray bakes. Um, so millionaire, the millionaire shortbread was made from digestive biscuit base, which I don't like. I, th I think millionaire shortbread, because it's supposed to be like expensive, isn't it? Should be made from real shortbread. So occasionally we're allowed to actually make it um, from that. But our, our tray bakes were all full, full pan sizes. Um, so yeah, so it brings back nice memories. Yep. All right, so that looks like the butter is all good. So it's all melted. So we just want to pop all the, the base in 
and then our sugar. Just gonna turn the heat down so it smells like it's starting to, to this wee pan can be a bit temperamental. It doesn't really have to be on the heat once it's melted to be honest. So I've turned the heat off, but I'll just there we go. Mmm, you get that lovely smell. So there we go. Now the one thing, I made these last year at, um, at Christmas for a Christmas party and I put the base in and I was so pressing down to make sure it was firm that when people were actually eating the, eating the lemon meringue pie they couldn't uh, get the base because <laughs> it was so hard. So I just, I'm just going to gently put it in this year. You learn your learn lesson. I think because you make the big one you want it to be hard for when you cut it so it kind of stays together but with the wee individual ones it doesn't actually matter. There we go, so right, I'll just tweak that off. That's good. Now I'm just gonna pop that out of the way. Good. Now that you can, this worktop's fine to set hot things on it. All right, so this is when we get to a little production line. So you've got your, your mix there, and you get your little teaspoon, and then all we want to do is just pop about two, two in, and just give it a little dab down. How's that looking? Yeah. Okay, so just down there like that and just gentle. Okay, so let's just see, is it two? One, two, yep, and there like that. So any any type of little ramekin dish um, that you've got lying around is fine. Um, yeah, that looks good. Now, I just thought I'll maybe just give you a measurement of this one just so you've got a rough idea. Just get my ruler. So they look about four, but yeah, four, four inches. And the depth is about one and a half uh, inches in, in, in depth there. Okay, so, all right, so I'll just fast forward and get these filled. Okay, so that's the biscuit base done. So we see we've got all 12 there, looking good. Oh, a bit of biscuit up there. So next is making the, the lemon filling. So um, now, so what I've got here is the, the, uh, the lemon here. So, so it's uh, four, four medium-sized lemons, uh, the juice. Uh, and I did it in the juicer and I did it in a half setting so I let a little bit of the pulp through. Uh, and then I've got the, the, the zest of uh, four lemons here as well. So just pop that in there and then pop your egg, so four egg yolks in there and then a whole tin of condensed milk so this is 395, 70, 379 okay so I'm just going to pop that in there so I'm going to confess, last time I made this was last Christmas this is now Christmas Eve that I'm making this I put a wee thing on Facebook to see if people wanted to see me, because I was going to make them anyway, and people were quite happy for me to, to do it as a wee tutorial. Um, but I remember last year, I was, there was either not enough filling or not enough meringue, so we'll soon find out, so uh, I will adjust the recipe accordingly. Okay, now it does go a bit funny um, when you mix this up, as if it's kind of separating, but just mix it together. Okay. Smells lovely. So I've got the oven at 170 Celsius. Okay, there we go. That should be easier doing that in a, a jug, just um, for, for next, for when you do it. Okay, but this, this one bends, so that's good. So we now want to pour uh, the mix. Now it looks like I've not pushed down that base. Now it's done as it, uh, you, you can refrigerate beforehand, um, but I'm just gonna go straight ahead. Okay, so we're gonna try and divide this by 12. Let's see how we get on, so. Now I'm not, I don't want to be skimpy, so if I've not got enough, I will make more. Okay. 
I think I'm going to have to make more. <laughs> it wasn't until I started looking at the ingredients, I thought, I think this is good for a flan, but I might need more for a, yeah, I'm going to need more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the same again, or should I just do half? Should be one and a half. I think one and a half, isn't it really? Oh, let me see. How much is actually in the little dish? Let's have a look. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so you can see a little short, that's what I thought was going to happen. So I'll add another half on to the, 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 the ingredients there, so that when you look at ingredients on the website, it will be uh, to do all 12 ramekins, okay? All right, so you can see here, now I decided just to make the same quantity again, and you can see here it's not, it's, it's only add a little bit extra to it. So, um, so I've just doubled it, which is perfect. Um, so I've done the exact same with the meringue, I've just doubled the meringue as well, which has all been altered in the recipe. All right, so uh, I've got the eight egg whites, so I'm just gonna just pop them in a spotlessly clean mixer. There we go. And with a balloon whisk, we want to, Get it nice and fluffy. It should come to the stage uh, where you can hold it upside down over Matthew's head and the, the meringue won't fall out, okay? So I've got that at number four. All right, so we'll just do the wee test and see, it's been a long time since I've done this. So you can see there, look, got it. Yeah, so I'm going to hold, yay, there we go, good, right, so pop that in, now just on a slow speed, uh, we just want to start uh, adding the, the sugar, just a little bit at a time, we've got a new glass bowl and I forgot to use it, sorry, it was Matthew's idea as well, and we just, I just completely forgot about it. So you can use normal caster sugar, just the gold gives it a bit more of a kind of golden feel uh, when you see it all uh, baked, which is nice. There we go, I'm just going to turn it up a bit. Okay, so that's all the caster sugar, the gold caster sugar added. So we just want to put full blast to get a big bit of air into it. Yes, there we go. I wasn't sure if it was ready, but it is. So should be a nice stiff peak consistency. And the same thing again. You can see, look at that nice golden color. When we hold it upside down, it's just not moving at all. Yay, there we go. Okay, so just get the... Okay, now of course if you've got any left from this, of course you can make, you could pipe some little meringue uh, nests for little pavlovas, uh, or you could just make some little um, little shells that you can make um, with some fresh cream, it'd be nice once they're cooked. Okay, so I'm using a large uh, star nozzle. Okay. I was getting, when I was waiting for it to mix up there, I was getting flashbacks and when we used to make the meringue in the bakery, um, we used to make hundreds of meringue at Christmas time in Pavlo's and um, we used to do half brown sugar and half, um, no, half cast sugar and half icing sugar when we made our meringues uh, and they were lovely. The ones where you chew, it's chew in the middle, a bit crunchy on the outside. Just like these ones. Okay, so bring it down. There we go. Right, so I just bring that across, and you can do little stars, or you can just do a swirl. I'm going to just go for a, a, a swirl. Okay, so just around there, and then into the like that. Okay, so there we go. 
Look at that, lovely. Okay, so fast forward. All right, so there we go, look at that. So that was perfect amount, so just doubling the filling and the meringue was perfect. They're actually quite big, aren't they? <laughs> Oh well, never mind. Uh, okay, so I'm going to pop them in the oven. Um, so in for about 15 to 20 minutes at 170, and then when they come out, they're going to be lovely and golden. Okay, so see you in a jiffy. So here we go, that's the meringues came out of the oven. Um, so they look lovely, nice and juicy. Um, it was bubbling away, and of course you've got that lovely golden meringue on top. Now, to finish it off, um, you can just add a little bit of glitter, okay? So this one is uh, blush, so um, it's just a little bit of a, a dry pump, and it's just quite nice just to add a little bit of luster on top. Now you can use a bit of gold. Uh, I just thought maybe just a little bit of the pink uh, would be quite nice just to finish it off and just gives it a wee, a wee bit of a luster, a nice shimmer to finish it off. And the only thing that's left to do is to get a spoon and enjoy. Now, I can't, I know, they're actually better left to be cold. I prefer to eat a cold meringue, lemon meringue pie than a hot one. So it's better to let them to cool, uh, so you can really, the, the flavor really comes out when it's cooled down. So there we go. So that's the lemon meringue pie with a ginger crunch. Hi guys, today I'm going to show you this tasty traditional Scottish tablet. So on today's sweet treat tutorial, I'm going to take you through all the different stages from using the caster sugar, condensed milk, butter, milk, water to create this really yummy and traditional Scottish tablet. So come on, let's get started. Okie dokie, so it's now time to go seriously sweet treat time and uh, we're going to really rank things up here. So um, yeah, I hope you've got a sweet tooth. Uh, so this is a Scottish treat, it's a sweet treat in Scotland and um, it's very very popular at uh, New Year Christmas time uh, but also for wedding favours um, and, um, and just when you were a wee, when you're a little, little person, uh, it was always a wee treat when you went to your granny's <laughs> to get some tablet, homemade tablet. And it just, it just uh, I think the dentists actually brought this out to make themselves a fortune with all the, the rotten teeth in Scotland. <laughs> but it's, it's, like, it's like fudge, but I think, I think it, it's the next level of sweetness. Um, so it's full on, um, but it's a great wee treat and a wee cup of tea and it goes down a treat. So I made this at Christmas and New Year and I had to post it on Facebook and I got a lot of feedback, but unfortunately it's now we're into mid-January before I've been able to actually make it. So, but anyway, it'll be on there, so it means you can make it any time of the, the year. Um, so, what does it consist of? So we've got 150 mils of water and 150 mils of uns unsalted um, semi-skimmed milk. So 150 water, 150 of semi-skimmed milk. We have 200 mils of condensed milk, so full fat condensed milk. We have 125 grams of uh, unsalted butter and we have 900 grams of caster sugar. So it needs to be the fine sugar, preferably not the granulated sugar uh, for this. We have, uh, this is actually my soup pot, but it's the only one I can make tablet in that doesn't actually, um, 
stick to the bottom. So there, we've got our little hot plate, which is good to go. And we have our pan. This is, this is a 20, I always forget the size of it, that's why I've got the ruler. 29, yeah, 29 by 20 centimeter. So 20, 29 by 20 centimeter pan. So round about that size. Make sure you've got the sides on it, okay? Because it's, it's, it can't escape. Now, a lot of people like to make it they just put it straight in the pan, but I prefer to put. Um, I prefer to line it with a bit of roof paper. Um, I just, I just prefer to do it that way. But you can actually just put it straight in, and it does come out because it's just, it just goes so hard, it just pops back out. But I prefer to put a bit of paper in just, just to make sure. Um, so I'll just put the pan uh, over there for the, the meantime. So the only ingredient that we're not going to put in the pan just now is the condensed milk. We're going to leave that right till later on. So what we want to do is we want to turn the, the heat on. Now this has got five settings and I'm going to just put it at number two, okay? So I'm going to put my liquid in. It's 150 water and 150 um, semi-skimmed milk. I'm going to put 900 grams of caster sugar in. I can feel Matthew twitching so I'm not like this underneath the camera, so. Ooh. I'll bring this over so he stops twitching. There we go. Uh, and then, of course, we want to add the butter as well. The butter, uh, room temperature preferably, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to melt in the pot anyway. Okay, pop that in there like that. There we go. Right, and all we want to do is just gently bring that up until it goes clear, until the sugar's dissolved, the butter's melted, and it's like any clear, um, syrupy uh, type thing. And then once we get to that stage, we're going to turn it up a little bit more and we want to bring it up to 114 degrees. Okay, so just pop that in. Okay, now a lot of people in Scotland make it with full milk, so they'll make it with all milk and no water. I've tried it that way before and I always have more problems with the all milk. I find when it's, when it's got the half water, half milk, it just gives a nicer tablet and it just doesn't give me problems. It always sets. Where sometimes when I use it all milk, it's, it's sometimes it doesn't set for some weird reason. And when it sets, when it doesn't set, um, it's actually lovely because you can eat it with a spoon, but it's very dangerous because <laughs> you don't know how much you're actually eating. Um, now I like it, what I like to call a peely wally tablet. A peely wally, good, good old Scottish word, um, is a very pale looking tablet. Um, but a lot of people prefer it with, a, like my gran and mum and dad, prefer it with a slightly more burnt look, so a little bit more caramelised brown uh, look to it. So uh, you, you basically when you're, when you're bringing it up to temperature, when it goes up to the final temperature, which is 118 degrees, if you leave it on for a a little bit longer, so it's almost up to 119, uh, you will see it definitely goes a, a lot darker. Um, but as soon as it gets 118 degrees, I like to whip it off, uh, just so it's got a nice kind of light golden colour uh, to it. Okay, so this is quite a long process to, to bring it down, but just keep on stirring. Now if you want, you can always have a, a, a little um, soft um, spatula just to sort of scrape the sugar off the sides as you go around. I'm going to be honest, I never, I never usually do that. Okay, so I'm just going to that sort of, uh, we'll just do a wee fast forward here. Okay, so that's it and it completely dissolved. You can see there, look at that nice it's sort of golden and smooth, and there's no lumps or anything like that, nice and smooth. So what I've done now, I've went from number two to number three, and as I said, it goes up to number five in total, so it kind of gives you a rough idea. Um, so I've got up at number three. Don't be tempted to put it right up to bring it to the boil, it's not a good idea, it will just burn. So on to number three, and again, we're just gonna leave it 10, 10, 15 minutes, and you'll see it'll start to, to bubble. And when it starts to bubble, I just normally get the whisk and give it a little whisk, and you want to keep whisking until it comes to 114 degrees Celsius, all right? So again, we'll just fast forward to that stage. All right, so that's the temperature came up to uh, 114 degrees uh, Celsius. So I'm just going to remove, the, I've got a wee glass of water here now, I just put all the tools in there, so it, keeps, it stops them from um, going too sticky. Uh, so I've got my condensed milk, it's time to pour that in. Actually, I'm gonna use this. Now I've got 200 and a bit mils because I always think there's a bit sticks to the side of the jug. 
So just put that in. There we go. Okay, and then what I like to do is just give it a good whisk. And now it's, now that took, that was how long, Matthew, about 15, 20 minutes it was, wasn't it? Yeah, that's about 15, 20 minutes to bring it up to there now. You can see there, it's up at just between the two and the three. You just don't want to bring it up too high, okay? Now just give it a little whisk. And just, you can just turn it, turn the temperature up just ever so slightly a little bit higher. So I've got it on three now. Uh, and we just want to bring this up until it comes to the magic temperature, which is 118 degrees Celsius, okay? So it'll start to bubble, and then when it bubbles, you don't really have to mix it. I, I just give it the odd little whisk as I go along. Um, and then once it comes to 118, then it's your choice when you're looking at it, do you want it to stay that color, or do you want to just take it a little risky and just leave it a little bit longer, just so you can start seeing a little bit more dark brown. But as soon as that comes to that moment, we will come back and you will see the, the bubble in trouble. Now I've got my piece of paper ready, it just sits on the top, I don't put any, I don't stick it down, I literally just sit it on there and when I pour the, the tablet mix on top it just pulls it down and it goes into the corners. Alright, okay, so, uh, so uh, we'll pull it back in a set about 10 to 15 minutes, alright? Alright, so it's coming up fast all of a sudden, so that's good. You can see the colour, look how golden it's looking, so it's 17 what? 21? That can't be right. What? No, no. 19, 18, 17. Yeah, 17. 17.1. Let's go down to 16 again. What's going on? Can you see how lovely and thick it sounds? So it's like that nice bubbly. Okay, so just give it a wee stir. <clears throat> Right, let's just see. That should give me a true reading. It goes up to, and it goes back down. It's not the best thermometer. You're better with the infrared ones. That's a touch in the bottom, so that's it in the pan. It's not touching the bottom. It's just on the wood. 17.4. So you can see just the going by the colour of it, if I just take this out, pop the, the whisk in. You can, when you start around you can sort of see the colour more, it's still quite pale, it's very thick. So you've got your bowl, preferably a metal one, I've only got a plastic one, but I've made it in a plastic one before. As soon as, it's, as soon as it hits 118, uh, we want to pour it into that bowl. Now you've got to be very careful. Oh, it's touching the bottom. So if you see it going up rapidly, it's probably because it's touching the bottom. 17.918, there we go. Good. So this is where you've got the decision to make. So what colour? So you can see here it's definitely, that's the colour, I, I like it that colour. So I'm going to take it off, but you can leave it on a wee bit longer if you want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, so, uh, so I just want to switch the heat off, first of all. There we go. Right, so we just want to, I can't move that hotly because it's too hot. So just be very careful, pour away from yourself. and get it all out. Okay, there we go. Right, now I'm gonna unplug that hot plate and I'll just pull that away. Sorry. So just bring this back over. Now don't feel you need the, the urge to start whisking straight away. You can actually leave it just to let it come down to sort of just cool down a little bit. Um, now, if you're worried if it's going to set or not, the key thing is that the pan, 
Now, if you look at the pan, can you see it's gone quite hard already? Now, if I get a wee pallet knife, let's just see. And if we just scrape the side, see it just it's formed that crystal, it's crystallising already. You can see it's, going, it's thickening up, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so that's been sat. So what we need to do is just get a whisk. Oh, look at that lovely rich colour. Okay, and just, yeah, you can see there it's just calmed down and you just really need to give it a good whisk. Again, some people do this and some people don't do this, but it seems to set a much better and give a really nice, sort of smooth, um, smooth texture in the tongue when you put it in your mouth. So and that's what we're looking for. So you just want to give it a good old beat for about five, to, you know, yeah, about three or four or five minutes and you actually start to feel it thicken as it's cooling down, okay? And then of course we can bring our pan over uh, and as soon as it's ready, we can pour it in there. Now, you get all different types of tablets these days. Um, so you can get tablet with salted, I can get salted caramel sort of flavored ones. You can get, um, I, th I think I've seen iron brew ones. You get ones with little sultanas through them. Um, so there's, you can, you can be a bit more funky with it. Uh, the best one I think is vanilla ice cream with tablet chunks through it. <laughs> it's really bad for you, <laughs> but it's really nice as well. Okay, so as I'm stirring this up, I can definitely feel it starting to thicken. Look at that nice colour. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pour it into the pan and then you just leave it for about five minutes, five, five, ten minutes, and then you get a knife and you score the top. So before it just sets, Screw the top just so the lines are there so when you go to cut it, it doesn't crack. Like, like you know, when hard chocolate, you try and cut it, um, it cracks. And it just gives you nice little squares. And you want the, the squares to be about one, one inch, just one inch by one inch or about two and a half centimetres, three centimetres square. Okay, so I'm really starting to feel it. As it's coming down the temperature, you can definitely feel it starting to, to thicken up. All right, so there we go. So that's it. it. Feels good. It's definitely starting to get really thick. So we stop there, and we're just going to bring the paper over. Okay, just make sure it's in the middle. Yep, it's fine. Okay, and just pour it in. Now, just as that's going in there, just help it to get into the bit the ends. Watch your fingers. Maybe don't put your finger in there, maybe put a palette knife in if you try to get it to the edges. Okay, there's still a wee bit there. Oops. You can see it's actually thickening very fast. Ah! Right, use a palette knife. Uh, you can see almost getting a skin already. So that's how thick it's um, setting already. It's got a bit of a skin on there. Give it a little shake, you can see that corner, but it's not quite down. Let's go to me. Just to push that down. There we go. Lovely. Oh, nice. All right. So, five, ten minutes, let that firm up, and then we come back. We'll then cut in all the little. Um, the lines, okay? So uh, don't worry about the corners. The corners aren't brilliant, but of course, we need to sample it, don't we? So the corners are for us to sample. So um, so the good thing about the grease with paper is we can whip it out uh, and it makes it easier to cut. So, um, so just see if it's gonna come out nicely. There we go, look at that. Easy, easy. Okay, and then just carefully, you can see, just releases perfectly from the the paper. Um, now, you can get a ruler if you want to, to, to do it that way. I generally just start from the middle and you just cut across like that. Let's clean the excess off. But they're not perfect. You can get, I've got markers in the drawer, but just feel traditional to do it by, by freehand. Okay, and then just uh, one in between. Yeah. 
and you can see it just gives a really nice size. Okay, and then turn it around. And the same again, so just there. Okay, so this is the this is the point where you've got a choice. Do you want to make it quite big or slightly smaller? I would always go slightly smaller. I think it's better. Because it's very sweet. Now I remember I took this on I was teaching in India and was it India? Yeah, it was it India and in Dubai. So I took it to Dubai and I brought it out at the at the sweet, three o'clock sweet treat. So I brought the tablet out. I didn't actually make it, but there's a shop in Lithgow that made it. It was just exceptional, the best. And um, and they put them out and they had to spit it back out again. <laughs> it was fucked. It was sweet for them. And then when I took it to India, uh, I think Indian uh, people have uh, they must eat something that's quite similar, and they actually enjoyed it. Uh, but the, the the people in Dubai really didn't like it at all. <laughs> it was quite funny. Uh, okay, so. Now all we have to do is just leave it to go nice and hard, okay? So I'd say another sort of 10, 15 minutes and then we can back and then we can cut it all up and, uh, and get the kettle on. Okay, so, uh, so now it's time to cut it and eat. So, uh, so get your sharp knife and uh, we just want to just cut it down. You can see there it's nice and hard. Because you've put that crack, it, well you see it's cracked a little bit at the edge there, that's annoying. So we'll have to just eat that bit. Okay, so just get a little uh, tissue just to clean your knife. And then just do it slowly, so just running over and then over again. Hopefully not getting cracks, there we go. So I'll do one more and then we'll just cut sideways. Still a little bit soft in the middle, but it's fine. Just peel that back. And then all you need to do is just sort of bring them back together. There we go, and then just cut. Because it's only three, it cuts quite easily. There we go. The smell is amazing. Okay, look at that. Now, absolutely, I mean, they're, they're actually still quite big bits. They are about an inch by inch. So if, you, if you're doing little wedding favours, I reckon you could probably make them smaller. Yeah. Okay, so there we are. So if we just lift a wee bit up, you can see, look at that lovely yumminess there. Okay, now the best thing to do now is just have a wee taste. So I do apologise. Mmm. 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 And it's still a little bit warm. Oh, it's lovely. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Oh yeah, baby. Mm, lovely. Time to get the kettle on. So there we go. So there's how to make traditional Scottish tablet. Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to bake my yummy caramel cheesecake. So as you can see, I'm going to take you through all the different stages to create this cheesecake. From making a lovely crunchy base, making a caramel filling with a little bit of Irish cream and a caramel centre surprise, and then finishing it off with a chocolate flake. So come on, let's get started. Oh, 
Okay, so let's get started on making this lovely and yummy Irish cream cheesecake. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So, what have we got in front of me? Now, I actually dropped, splashed the Baileys went everywhere. So, uh, you see splashes everywhere. I can't clean it all off because I'd, I'd ruined the, 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 the stuff. So, someone has got a little bit of Baileys already mixed into it uh, already. So, um, so, we've got a little dishes. These are three and a half inch uh, by uh, one and a half uh, deep. So, that's the little ramekin dishes that we're using. Now, we have um, the butter here um, and the sugar for the caramel. Yep, so the caramel. I, know, I can't remember all the stuff, so I've got it all uh, measured, written down. 125 grams of butter and 125 grams of sugar. And we have condensed milk, 200 grams of this. for the. That's for the caramel. Uh, and then for the filling, we have, uh, we have 700 and 20 grams of Philly, Phil Fat Philadelphia, 300 grams of cream, 100 grams of Cadbury's Flakes, or just chocolate, shaved chocolate. We have 50 grams, mils of Baileys, and we have 100 and, I can't remember, 40 grams of ice and sugar. That was a, that, that's why I write it down, because I can't remember it all. Okay, so, bring this along. So I made this last year for Christmas, um, and the only thing that I'm doing different this year is I am using, I'm going to put caramels, so it's a caramel Irish cream. I keep going to see the B word, the B word but I'm not supposed to use the B word because that's a copy infringement, copyright. Um, okay, so let's get the, the, the butter for the base. So we've got uh, 100 grams of butter. So just pop that in there. And you want to bring that up. Bring it up to the boil. <laughs> you want to get it um, melted. Okay, so I've got that on so medium heat. And you can see that that's just coming down. So once that's melted, uh, we want to mix in our digested biscuits. So I've just crunched that up, and that is uh, 200 grams. Am I correct? 200 grams of digested biscuits crunched up, uh, and about 25 grams of demerara uh, sugar, just to give it a, a little extra crunch. So just bring that, just let that soften. Okay, there we go, so that's that uh, melted. So, uh, so we just want to then pour that on the mix. Perfect. This is gonna be hot, just turn it away. And then just pop in your sugar, there we go and just give that a wee mix. If you want, you can put a, bit, a couple of teaspoons of cocoa powder if you want to make it more of a chocolatey base as well. Or use chocolate digested biscuits crunched up. Uh, that's quite nice as well. All right, there we go. Perfect, there we go, so that's that made. And all we have to do is just get your little uh, dish and you just want to fill the bottom. So just in there. Now remember don't press too hard or it'll be hard, hard to eat. We want it just to just a, a nice little crumble mix on the bottom. So one, two, so three, three little teaspoons of biscuit base. All right, so I'll just quickly get them in. All right, so now we want to make the caramel. So, um, so what we want to do is put 200 grams. Now, I'm going to be really naughty. This has got 300 and is it 390. So it's roughly half a tin. Where is it? Th yeah, th 390. So I'm just, I'm just going to gauge it. Okay. A bit more. There we go. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Good. And uh, we just want to chuck in the sugar and the butter. Okay, that's fine. And all we want to do is just keep on stirring this all the time. Okay, so uh, it'd help if it was on. <laughs> so you want to bring it up to like a sort of boil. And then once it comes to a boil, you then reduce the heat uh, down to a simmer and then it just you just keep on beating it until it goes a caramel color just on a simmer now it'll probably take about 10 minutes to get to that uh, consistency 
Um, now, if you want to, to make it like a salty caramel, then just add in um, one or two teaspoons of salt, depending on what your taste buds are, if you want to make it a salty caramel one. So I'm just gonna make it a normal caramel because I've got a few people who don't like the salty caramel that are coming to the party. But who doesn't like salty caramel? Now, I'm using a soup bowl pot for this one because the, the other pot that I used for the base, um, it just always burns the toffee when I make it, or the caramel. So, um, okay, so I'm just gonna let that come to the boil. So back in a wee jiffy. Okay, I was too busy talking there, and I'd re I forgot I turned it up to five to get the heat up. So I've l l I just turned it back down to one, uh, which was really silly on me. So it, has it did start to slightly caramelise in the bottom too quickly. So I have got tiny little bits of caramel, um, burnt, almost burnt looking, but they're not. It's just a little bit more, it's going to give a little speckled look to it. So I've put it back to one, and you can see that you've got wee bubbles coming up, which uh, that's it coming to the boil. Um, so it was bubbling away, so I've turned it back down to one, um, and once it's down to one, and it feels way more in control now, I almost lost it. As soon as I saw the wee brown bits come up, I just tweaked it off, and it's fine. It won't make any difference. Um, so I've just got it down at one and a half. Uh, actually, this hot plate must be really, really not good to control the heat in because it looks like it's still bubbling a lot. Yeah. And you just want to keep on going round and round and round and round until it goes to like a caramel colour. So you can see here it's still very, very creamy looking. I'm not convinced I like this hot plate for doing caramel. I think it's not, um, it's not got a good thermostat on it because it just seems to be. I normally use the, the, normal, the plate next door for this, um, the cooker. It just seems to be very, very bubbly. Right, so I, I think it's still not, I can't see the brown on the bottom anymore, so I think we're still, we're, we're still good. So, okay, so I'm just gonna keep on whisking, 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 whisking. I'll be about five, 10 minutes. I think it's gonna be about five minutes because it's quite, it's quite a hot, hot plate. Uh, and I come back, it'll be a nice, more like a, a golden caramel color. All right, so um, I was gonna say fast, 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 but I don't have to say that because it's gonna happen anyway, okay? Okay, so the caramel turned very, very quickly there. So I had to just take it off. You can see, can you see how thick it is? Lovely, yum, yum, yum. Okay, so just put that down. Okay, leave that for your Scooby snack. Uh, and I want to spoon a nice dollop into each, each one, okay? Try and do this. So don't worry about trying to spread out, because it's just like a wee surprise, isn't it? So it doesn't really matter. Okay, so try and start to spread it. Um, of course, it will just bring the biscuit up as long as you just get it in the middle there. And of course, when they bite in, it will just be this caramel yumminess in the middle. You can see how thick it's going. Okay. So I'm just gonna try and not have much left because I will want to eat it. I think that first one didn't get much, did it? There you go, so you can see there, I've got a wee teaspoon. No, I've not, I'll just use this, just to divide the remainder. There you go. Oh gosh, it's setting very fast. There we go, that's fine, good. There we are. So what we have to do now is just put them to one side and try not to get a mess, what a mess, Paul. Jeez Louise, oh, there we go, it came off. Okay, so you want to pop them in the fridge for about 10, 15 minutes. I'll put them in the fridge. We're gonna make more beautiful and creamy Irish cream topping. So we've got our 300 mils, just double checking. Oh gosh, yes, 300 mils of double cream. So I want to pop that in our mixer. Okay, and uh, just bring that down. And we just want to whisk it up so it's nice and, nice and thick, okay? Okay, so you can see it get nice and thick. So what I want to do now is add the ice and sugar. Just pop the ice and sugar in there, that bowl is covered in Baileys. <laughs> and then just whisk that up again. Perfect, so you can see there it's got a nice stiff peak there. Okay, so just don't clean this, just put it to one side. Okay, and we want to remove the, the cream. So normally I've got a spatula for this, but I can't find it, so I'm gonna use a big spoon. Okay, and just pop that into the bowl. Here we go. There. 
try and get out as much as possible. There we go. All right, and then we'll pop that back on. Uh, and now we want to add the, the cream cheese uh, frost, uh, cream, cheese, cream cheese frost, <laughs> I've lost the plot. Oh, the cream cheese, just add the, the full fat uh, cream cheese into the, the bowl. All right, so that's that added in there. So I'm just gonna pop this on here. Down. And we've got our Baileys, so just switch it on low speed. And just dribble that in. Okay, just pour it in. <laughs> I think I'm actually getting drunk on the fumes. Okay, and just give it a wee mix up. Okay, and then we just want to start breaking up and add in the chocolate. Oh, there's a bit of wrapper, that's not good. Okay, let's just break it up in there, a bit easier. There we go. Okay, and just chuck them in. Yeah. Uh -oh. There we go. Oh yeah, you can smell the berries. And there we go. So that's that mixed in. Uh, now you can lick the, the whisk. And we just want to then mix the two together. Okay, so just pop that on and just, you're just folding it in. Right, okay, and just fold together. Here's that nice light creaminess. Look at that lovely. Or I should say it in a Yorkshire accent. Looks lovely. If you say it in a Yorkshire accent, it looks lovely. Lovely. Then look, Scottish looks lovely. <laughs> it obviously tells it doesn't sound very, it doesn't sound Scottish, does it? <laughs> looks lovely. It just sounds like normal, doesn't it? <laughs> right, there we go. There we go. And there we go. So that's just make sure you can just see some little white bits of the cream. Now we we have different the cream's not the same as the cream back home in Scotland here, but not quite as, uh, just something not quite the same, but it's all right. Okay, I'm gonna have a quick tidy up, and then we come back, and we'll get piping these into the dishes. Okay, so that's the, 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 the base has been in the fridge, nice and hard, peeled down. So we just want to get a big piping bag. Uh, don't put a nozzle on because you've got the chocolate in there, and of course the chocolate will just block the, the nozzle. And the good thing it being a little dish, it will set anyway, this does set, is, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to worry if it is a little bit soft because it's in a dish, so just perfect. Okay, so we just want to pipe that and just make sure you cover over the surprise in the middle. You can see even with that big hole in the bottom there, it's still quite jaggy coming out. Now, I'm just being a little bit frugal to start with, and then we'll go back and add more. And then once you've got the filled, you've got two options. You can leave it rustic looking, or you can get a little palette knife and just smooth it off so it's completely flat on top. So I suppose the flat look will look more professional, and then the, the rustic, more rustic, I suppose, will made. Let's just see, there's a wee bit left there. Just uh, get the kettle on. Let's just see. I think I quite like it, just a little bit more like that. It's got more of a cheesecake feel. Let's see. Yeah, it looks a little bit, bit better. Okay, so I'm just gonna round and just flatten them off a little bit. 
All right, so here we go. So the finishing touches, I'm using this, this new dust. It's called Bling Bling. It's 100% edible gold glitter. And it looks really sparkly. So we all need a little bit of sparkle at Christmas. Look at that. That has got to be the best edible gold I've ever seen. There we go. Look at that. And this is from Magic Colors, I believe. There we go. Oh, look at that. Christmas or any time. Imagine a wedding, having that as your wee wedding. Look at that. One more, one more. And there we go. All finished. So um, now, same thing as the lemon meringue pies. They're best left uh, chilled and then eating. Okay, so um, well, the lemon meringue pies, once they're cool, you don't have to refrigerate them. You can just serve them up. Um, with the, the cheesecakes, definitely want to chill them. So just I'd make them the night before or the first thing in the morning uh, for your evening uh, party or whatever it is you're up to. So at least sort of four or five hours to give them a good chill before serving up. And there we go. So that's it finished. Hope you've enjoyed watching this one and we'll see you again soon. Bye.